Hillary Burton Morgan here, and I'm excited to tell you about a new series I'm launching. It is the companion podcast to Sundance TV's True Crime Story. It couldn't happen here. Now on the TV show, we focus on small towns and the crimes that can rip them apart. And on this podcast, we will go even deeper into our cases and give you a unique insider perspective on how these stories are told. Come join us as we get curious and get involved. Listen to True Crime Story. It couldn't happen here on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Tune in to the new podcast, Stories from the Village of Nothing Much. Like easy listening, but for fiction. If you've overdosed on bad news, we invite you into a world where the glimmers of goodness in everyday life are all around you. I'm Catherine Nikolai, and I'm an architect of Cozy. Come spend some time where everyone is welcome and the default is kindness. Listen, relax, enjoy. Listen to stories from the Village of Nothing Much on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Walter Isaacson set out to write about a world-changing genius in Elon Musk and found a man addicted to chaos and conspiracy. I'm thinking it's idiotic to buy Twitter because he doesn't have a fingertip feel for social-emotional networks. The book launched a thousand hot takes, so I sat down with Isaacson to try to get past the noise. Well, I like the fact that people who say I'm not as tough on Musk as I should be are always using anecdotes from my book to show why we should be tough on Musk. Join me, Evan Ratliff, for On Musk with Walter Isaacson. Listen on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Theo Henderson, host and creator of the podcast called We Young House. My lived experience in houselessness is extensive. I was one of over 75,000 experiencing houselessness on a given night in Los Angeles. Here's the simple truth. Houselessness is everywhere. It affects over a half a billion people in the United States alone. We the in-house will explore the senseless tragedy of displacement from the perspective of the in-house. Listen to We the in-house on iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. This is Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans with me, Cheryl Burke, and iHeartRadio Podcast. Welcome back to Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans. I'm just going to jump right in as I want to have just as much time with my next guest as possible. We haven't spoken in a few years, but no matter how long it's been, I still consider this person a good friend and a part of my dancing family for life. You know, you know her from The Bachelor. Um, She also is a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader. She was at least. And she did two seasons of Dancing with the Stars, season eight and All Stars. Um, Yeah, let's just get started because I can't wait to catch up. It's been a few years for sure. So please welcome my next guest, Melissa Rycroft Strickland to the show. Hey, stranger. (laughs) How are you? (laughs) My gosh. Welcome to Sex, Lies and Spray Tans. I'm doing great. How are you? I mean, I'm good. It's been a hot minute since I've gotten to see you, but... Wait, when was the last time? Was it when we did our threesome trio? Was oh, it whoa, wait a <laughs> <laughs> Way to jump on in there, Stevie. Um, yeah, you know what? It might be... It might have been the trio. Yeah, I think yeah. it was, actually. I think it was. And you know what? I will never forget it because <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. All we'll right, get there. Because I, <laughs> I really want to know how you really felt every time Juan Pablo would do that flip. <laughs> oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. Okay. Let's rewind a little bit okay, here. Okay. All right. Take it back. Okay. So I have to say that like out of everybody on the show and I've been I was on for 26 seasons obviously <laughs> obviously <laughs> so obvious um I have to say that I connected t- to you like more than most because you're so yeah. grounded you're so authentic and you never change like you are who you are and I'm and I totally respect like your authenticity your vulnerability and everything like me and you would have <laughs> some like heart to hearts about how yes, crazy this process was yes, um and I don't know it's just that you know, I feel obviously we all have our own lives and we all evolve, but I feel like we're just going to pick up where we left off. So, um, yeah, I know. Love that. Don't you? When you meet people like that? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I totally agree. I think you and I had something special. I ended up at many a random places going out with you back in the day. <laughs> have you met fun. sober Cheryl yet? I have met sober Cheryl. Yes. Weren't you? Okay. Pablo? Oh, wait, no, wait, was I sober? I think so. Oh, I just started my yeah, sobriety. No, it's been so. five and a half years. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Congrats, by the way. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. So, okay. So for those of you, of my listeners, basically, that don't watch The Bachelor, because I have to, like, straight up be honest here. Like, I have, I've never seen an episode of The Bachelor. You didn't even watch it, like, way back in the day when it was first coming out. No, because I was always on Dancing with the Stars or on tour. So it's like, at the (laughs) you know how that schedule is. I guess it was about the same time, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. What? So I guess... To give us a quick cliff note version of like what <laughs> happened. Um, and, you know, obviously I have questions that will get into Dancing with mm. Stars. I would love to talk about, you know, your family and I, all of it. So, mm. okay. Um, Cliff's notes version of my time on The Bachelor. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, my season, I think it was season eight. So, it was still a pretty new franchise way back then. I was 22 when I went on it, which now. I just hit, I know, right? You're shaking your head. I'm like 22. And I was like, I can't find love. I'll never get married. <laughs> um, Yeah. And my bachelor, his name was Jason. And long story short, I thought we had fallen in love, got engaged. And then we filmed the After the Final Rose about two weeks after we finished filming, where he broke up with me because he had not lost contact with the other runner up, Molly. Um, and then a week later, Dina Katz called me to join Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> and my listeners know, they you know Dina Katz, because oh, we always <laughs> reference her. She's the best. Um, you know, it, it was, was it a heartbreak for you? Did you fall in love or was it like TV love? Right. You know, hindsight, hundred percent is 2020. I, I will be completely honest that in the moment, I really thought I was in love with this guy. I really saw it. This is where I'm supposed to be. I was not in a good place at home. Like I had just quit Cowboys Cheerleaders for Ty, who's now my husband. Um, And he broke up with me a week after that. I did not like the job I was in. I was just kind of in one of those ruts. You know what I mean? I found myself in a place of like, I don't know what to do with my life. I don't know what's going on. I don't know where I'm supposed to be. Um, And a friend nominated me for The Bachelor. So when I got the huge packet, anybody that's seen it, it's like an 80 page packet that came in the mail. I filled it out and I was like, all right, we'll see where this goes. Why not? And it's like, once I got there, something clicked where I went, this is where I'm supposed to be. And so there's this guy giving me all this attention that I really craved at that time. You know, I was pretty insecure going into The Bachelor. I was pretty immature. I was very young and I kind of latched onto it, which is why... When I was crying in the limo, I was heartbroken. Yeah. You know, now looking back, I was not in love with him. (laughs) Right. You were in lust. In lust. Probably. Yes. I loved, I loved that he liked me and gave me that validation. How about that? And then also like, like Dancing with the Stars, I'm pretty sure you're consumed within that environment. Like there's really not much outside influence. Is that correct? Oh, it's not that there's not much. There's none. There's no phones. Um, that year, um, Barack Obama was nominated as president, elected as president. And we had no idea. Like we had producers what? come in the next morning to tell us who was the new president. Um, we had nothing but each other. So it's a total mind game, Cheryl. It is a total. You you have your production assistant, your little gal pal is what they call it. That's with you 24 hours a day, just feeding things into you. Like, oh, he was talking about you last night. Oh, you were on a date with so-and-so, but he came back and said he liked you to where you're like, oh my God. <laughs> so wow. it's it's a mind trip for sure. Well, yeah. And by the way, that's probably why it's such great television and still going on to this day. 100%. I mean, they just get crazier and crazier. So did you, had you seen Dancing with the Stars um, before ever or? So not Dancing with the Stars. I, I remember, so when Dina called me, it's hard to, com- the timeline's hard to explain because The Bachelor filmed and it didn't air for three months after that, right? So oh. Dina technically didn't call me until three months after Bachelor had ended and the After the Final Rose had aired on TV. So I know January 2009. Yes. Yes. I did a little bit of research <laughs> and then and then it looks like in like two weeks you you all of a sudden met Ty <laughs> well, it, that's what it looked like on TV yeah. right so we got it um, our my season of of Bachelor ended filming before Thanksgiving so that's okay. when we were done the after the final rose filmed December 3rd or 5th I remember those dates so oh, it's it, not live no it's, it was not live at all Uh, And especially that one, because everybody kind of knew what was going to happen. So there was no audience for that, which I didn't know. You didn't know at all? 
I had no idea. I sat, what do you mean? I had no idea that he was about to break up with me. And yeah, no, I had no idea. We were talking and he had, he, beforehand, I was like, is there anything that I need to know walking into this? Like, I assume things were not great. I'm going to be real honest. Like once we didn't see each other long distance with he and I, I'm a pretty outgoing (laughs) and he's not. And I noticed that pretty early on when all you have is phone calls. But I was like, maybe we just put on a united front for the camera, right? They had told me they were bumping up the filming of this after the final rose for Bachelorette production, which I believed, which now to come back was not true. He just wanted to get with Molly. And so production bumped everything up before that. So, no, I walked in going, he's told me we're fine. I I wore the stupid ring on my finger. Um, Did you guys see each other? Don't you guys like shack up in a secret like hiding? Girl, we weren't even together long enough. (laughs) Oh, got it. So, no, we did not. We didn't do all. And you had no inkling like that. Maybe this guy is just not into me. I mean, listen, I, I think I knew at that point, like this is not. It's not happening. But again, in my mind, I'm like, but we, this was a show we made. We got to kind of pretend like we're still great. And maybe we'll talk about the problems that we're having. Um, I did not expect the, no. I'm still in love with Molly and I've been talking with Molly and I haven't. And I was like, oh God, well now I just feel really stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, you talk about a mind trip with that. I went two months of my life not being able to tell anybody that one, I thought I had fallen in love, that I had gotten engaged, and then that I had gotten dumped. And I'm holding all of that in because, I, you know, you signed the contract and of I was course. terrified to break that contract. And so the emotional roller coaster going through my mind those two months before things aired. And I was like, I I was embarrassed. I mean, my parents of are the, still the only parents that have never been on the show. They were so against it, did not want to be a part of it. And I just felt are like you happy about that. Oh, God, now. Yes. Yes, yeah. way to go, Bob and Mary. <laughs> yes, Bob and Mary. Shout um, out to them. But yeah, I was really embarrassed with how it was going to air and everybody was going to hate me. And I don't know. I just, it, it gave me like this severe anxiety. And your producer, you're like, what? You're um, like my bestie. Well, not only that, I'm in the limo crying going, what the heck just happened? And she goes, hey, great news. Now you get to be the bachelorette. And I was like, are you? What? Like that's great my consolation news? price for going through all of this is that I get to be. I don't want to be the bachelor. <laughs> Wait, so were you the bachelorette? No, they they tried very hard. I'm gonna be honest. They sent they. I got gifts. I got enticed with a what? lot of money. Um, but I ultimately <sighs> was like, absolutely not. I don't trust you people. I don't want anything to do with good for you that. So yeah, what no. kind of gifts? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they were good. Let me just say the bachelor budget is <laughs> big. <laughs> and that was when Mike Fleiss was running the show, correct? Mike Fleiss was the head of the captain. Uh, yeah, he was the captain. And Chris Harrison and all of yeah. it, like yep. the, yeah, OG, the OG, OG, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so then Dina Katz. Did you have? Did you know who she was? No, no, I had no idea. Um, at this point, I'm still dodging ABC's calls because I was like, I have said, right. no, I, I want nothing to do with y'all. I'm back in my cubicle. Ty and I had reconnected again. Um, like, How did like, that reconnection happen? You know what's funny? So I got I got engaged in New Zealand. <laughs> and when I got back in the country and they gave me my phone back, you're laughing, but it's true. When I got my phone back and I turned it on, I had all these messages from Ty. And I was like, what the heck? Of course, now you call because you don't have me. And my phone just started ringing and it was Ty trying to get a hold of me. And I had developed on The Bachelor. If I can credit The Bachelor with anything, take the career stuff away. But like personally, the confidence that I gained of I know what I'm worth. I know what I want. And I know what I'm not going to put up with kind of stuff, everything that I had gone through. And it made me so angry at Ty. And I was like, how dare you call me knowing I'm happy and I'm in another situation? Um, Wait, why did he dump you the first um, that time or before this? 25. Yeah. Wasn't ready. I mean, and he had always said, he was like, you're the one. I'm just not ready for you now, which I never understood as a. 22 year old. I was like, I don't get it though. I'm right here and you're willing to let me go. And now I'm so much more mature and older. And I'm like, I get it. I totally, I I don't want kids to be in those relationships at 22 and 25. Yeah. Um, 
But he was, he was just being honest and I can't, you know, you can't be mad about that. But what happened is once I did leave, he had the, oh crap, maybe I did let her go. And the longer I was gone, he was like, oh God, I think something may have happened with somebody else. Right. And And then you developed your own self-worth and self-confidence as a woman. And then you had a network chasing after you, wanting you to be the bachelorette. And then Dina Cass is like, come on this (laughs) ballroom dance show. Exactly. Boom. (laughs) What a great, like you know, turn around, you know, in a way, it's like, the fact that first of all, that you had the confidence to say no to being the bachelorette is kudos to you. Because, you know, obviously, it could have been tempting with all the gifts and money they were throwing at you. And plus, you were also at your most vulnerable. Right, right. I was also upset, though, like I this was before reality TV kind of became what it is now. You know what I mean? There's not social media. We didn't go on the show to become famous. Nobody became famous after you were a a bachelorette on The Bachelor season. Right. Right. Um, Because you were one of the first bachelorettes other than Trista Sutter, obviously. But then it was you. There was no other one. Yes. And when I talked to Dina, she was like, the only reason I called you is because of that after the final rose. You know, when it's kind of like they built the storyline where everybody wanted y'all to be together and then they saw the heartbreak and yeah. it just so happened that Nancy O'Dell had gotten hurt the day of. Oh my God, that was that season. That was it. It was the and day. Jewel. Of, yes. The day that my After the Final Rose aired, she had gotten hurt and Dina jumped. I was there within what, two days? And I had three days to practice with Tony. Yeah. Only three days during. Oh my God. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. That's insanity. <laughs> but no, I had never seen Dancing with the Stars. And Dina called me and I originally said no. I was like, I hate ABC. I hate you all. You're horrible <laughs> people. And then I called Ty because, again, we're, we're dating at this point. And right. he goes, well, how much money is it? And I went, ooh, I didn't ask. So I called back. You and didn't he, ask? <laughs> Dina told me what the opening week amount was. And I was like, that's four years of my salary <laughs> sitting in my cubicle. And I went. I can do a week. I could go out right. for a week and dance and embarrass myself. <laughs> wait, you uh, thought, you, okay, wait, hold on. So was it more money than what they were going to offer you to be the bachelorette? No. It was not. not. Here, okay. You'll know this number. My, the, what they offered me for bachelorette was what you make the finale week of Dancing Got with it. So, Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that, but, but, but was there any chance, because in your contract, would you, would they have to have approved you going no. on dancing? Yes. And this was the call that I got. It was um, a producer from Bachelor who called me and said, we're going to connect you with someone from Dancing with the Stars. Their whole thing at Bachelor was that they wanted the audience to see that I was okay. And if I'm not going to do Bachelorette, what other avenue can they do to show the world that, look, it's not a horrible franchise. We're not bad people. She's okay. Which is why they then allowed me to do Dancing with the Stars. Got it. Right. Right. They saved their own ass. Uh, yes. Uh, looking back, would they have done it again? Probably not. But <laughs> I think at no, the time. No, I think they would have. Why not? Because you're so right. Like they, they, there right. needs to be a story. Like, you can't just fall off the, you know, right. planet. The way that it ended, I think in their minds, they just saw my redemption story would be I'd be the bachelorette. They'd, everybody would see me fall in love and the world goes as it should be. But because I didn't do bachelorette, they found themselves in a position of like, well, holy heck, what are we supposed to do? to let everybody know that everything is right. still okay. And <laughs> do you think you would have done it if you and Ty wouldn't have gotten back together? Bachelorette? No. But hands sure. down. Got I it. know for sure. Cause I kept telling them, I was like, you threw me under the bus. Why would you not do it again? If I was the lead and they kept saying, we protect our leads. But when the, after the final rose came out, I said, but you didn't. Cause you just threw Jason under the bus too. And made him look like an idiot, which I have a lot of sympathy for the position he was in at that time, too, now 20 years later. But I'm like, you don't protect your lead. You make a show. And I understand that. And I'm not saying anything bad about it. But I understand what you're doing. And I'm not going to put myself back in that situation. Right. Good for you. Look like an idiot. And and also don't say that you're protecting your lead when you're just not. So Right. 100%. (laughs) But that's exactly what they told me. Like, we protect our lead. And I went, yeah. Okay. So moving on to Dancing with the Stars, you didn't request Tony because you had no idea. No idea. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So this was the season when I danced with Gilles Marini. Yes, I remember. And we all made the finals. So we're going to get there because I don't think my listeners have heard like the whole 
ABC Jet experience oh, yet because I don't oh. think I've have I interviewed a finalist yet I don't know I don't think so. the question hasn't been asked but okay. I know that they're curious you also have tons of fan questions and we have to play rapid fire because okay, it's a thing but we're not there yet Okay, so how was your, so you had three days. What was your first dance? I'm assuming cha-cha. <laughs> no, it was a waltz. Oh, really? Oh. And I'm going to say that my dress was hideous because I guess it was made for <laughs> Nancy. And they told me Nancy was very modest and wanted to be like covered up. And they didn't have enough time to create She's a also like dress. very tall. <laughs> oh, they had to alter it, but they couldn't make a new dress. So I was no. in Nancy O'Dell's dress. They just, they, she is, I think, five inches taller than me. But I was like, I feel like I'm a nun. <laughs> so this was before they made rules for uh, training. So like we used to be able to rehearse as many hours as we wanted prior to the live show. And then all these people started getting injured, like Jewel, like Nancy oh. O'Dell. And that was that was when they made the rule of four hours maximum, basically up until starts. like mid season. Yeah, because it is a shock, obviously, to your body sure. and also mentally and all of it. But like, that is crazy. I've always said they need to do a season of all the people that got injured. And so they have another chance at this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, by the way, Jewel, that's a huge booking. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, you know, at the end of the day, look, everything's meant to be, obviously. Yeah. Now, when you had dance experience, you come from the yeah. Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. You kind of also, I heard an interview you did recently where you said that you had weigh-ins. Oh, on the Cowboys, yeah. Is that um, real? They don't do that anymore. We have okay, thank God. times, right? I mean, this was, I was a cheerleader back in 2005. So, I mean, it was a different time. You know, yeah. Um, but yes, we had daily weigh-ins and you had to be within a specific weight from your tryout weight. Um, and we were constantly on, you know, felt the pressure of there was weight warning or weight watch. There was weight warning and there was weight probation. What? Yeah. Right. Wait, um, what's weight watch? What's what? What, so what is all of watch it? means you've gone above the five pounds that you tried out with. And weight warning means that if you gain any more you're out of uniform and weight probation is you're out of uniform. Yeah. I mean, it sounds awful. And I hate saying that because I love no, the it cowboys. It is awful. It doesn't it sound happens, awful. It's but horrible. Again, this, this was 20 years ago yeah, when no, it, was I hear you. Kind of, it was kind of the culture. So none of us protested. Now, I'll be honest, there's a, there were a lot of diet pills. There were a lot of I'm sure. water pills. We would, when you knew there was a weigh-in, like for six hours before, you wouldn't eat or drink anything because you didn't want to, of course. you know, Tip the what if you have, what if you're on your period? Yeah, well, you can't do anything about that. I mean, no, <laughs> yeah, you can't. No. It was, it was, yeah. I think, I think at that time there were a lot of us that kind of left with body issues. I wasn't yes. even aware of what my body looked like until I was a Cowboys cheerleader, and then I was like, oh man, okay. And now I've, and not only that, I was a cheerleader when I was 22, 23. Your body's changing. You know what I mean? Of course. If anybody looks at what I looked like my first year to what I looked like my second year, my body is very different because I was just a maturing woman still growing. And, and, you know, I don't have a lot of curves, but my curves were coming that, that hadn't been there before. So it definitely messes with you mentally. Like why am, why am I five pounds heavier than I was a couple of weeks ago? And I'm not doing anything different. But Do you suffer from body dysmorphia? I think I did for a little bit. Yeah. Got it. I mean, I had always been naturally smaller, mm-hmm. but anytime that weight came on, I was like, whoa, freaking out a little bit again. Cause I hadn't, I didn't grow up with social media. I think it's a blessing, Cheryl, the way you and I grew up. I didn't know what other people looked like other than my friends. And so right. we all kind of grew up quote unquote confident that yeah. I'm happy and then you see other people around you and you're compared to other people around you. And then you feel the pressure of, oh, OK, all right. Now I have to keep this. And right. it's not as a woman, it's not. easy. And you're in, in front of mirrors. Like I always say, like when I was a dance, like when I was a competitor, that is, um, I didn't have actual weigh ins, but I did in a way like my yeah. dance coach. You know, I remember he put me on this thing called the Hollywood diet, which was just literally like at the grapefruit juice. Pepper. Yeah. Yeah. No, it just came in a bottle. And I remember we were driving to Blackpool, that big competition in England. And I was driving and I had to pee every two seconds because <laughs> I was just like, this is the only thing that All I was on. Juice. <laughs> uh. And did it work? Absolutely. But like I noticed too, like even when we were, for example, I'll never forget, like I was looking at obviously old pictures of us recently 
recently. And I I definitely still suffer from body dysmorphia. So I'm I'm working through it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, th- look, I think that being in front of the mirror since I was a little girl, um, the comparison is almost gonna have it's just natural, yeah. like you can't avoid it, especially when in when dancing, whether it was ballet at my time, but I also developed at nine years old, I looked the same, my body looked the same <laughs> as it did when it yeah. when I was nine. And um, it it's it's crazy because also on Dancing with the Stars, you know, like you see everything and we're, we're on TV and, you know, any back roll that I would have. And then I will never forget our trio when we had our fitting. And then looking at pictures now, I was so skinny and I was giving Daniela, the head of wardrobe, shout out to her, so much crap about because like my insecurities, obviously any anyone who's insecure will just put it out on somebody yeah. and my I was so testy and I was like do I look fat compared to Melissa and I was oh, just God. like hounding her and it's so my thigh is as big as my calf now you know it's like and it was just crazy how sick yeah. you know I I was really and um it's sad it is sad but it, if anybody looks at the world again that you grew up in and you're constantly being compared to other people you know yeah. I mean I don't know I don't know if I would have survived in a world like that. But that's what you were in. And not until I was 22, though. I, I didn't grow up with it. Oh. So I had I had a little bit of maturity. But at 22, I think we can all look back and be like, you still don't know anything. Like, you no. still not, you know, I'm just now getting to a point where I'm like, I am, I'm 40, <laughs> right? I'm flipping 40, Cheryl. Girl, I'm about to be 40. <laughs> Actually, I just can't wait. 39 is just like, okay, it's like but, almost there. Yes, but I will tell you what comes with 40 is I'm like, I don't look the way that I did back on Dancing with the Star or back when I was freaking gorgeous. But I'm what fine. You- I'm like, I'm fine because I'm healthy. I think I'm the healthiest I've been in my entire life. I'm working out more. I eat insanely well just because I want to because it makes me feel yes. good you know so I'm like yes. I feel like I am the healthiest I've been I'm not the skinniest I've been yeah. and I don't think that you would ever look at me and be like she looks like she's the healthiest but like I feel the best that I have that's and all I that know, matters yeah if maybe that just comes at a 40 confidence of like it is what it is and I'm not gonna yeah. give myself to you know did you ever feel the pressure on dancing or on Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders or even on the bachelorette to stay at a certain weight maybe not Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders obviously yeah, you had not, the pressure not but. Dallas Cowboys and not even bachelorette to be honest I didn't feel any pressure I think I started to feel it on dancing because that was tabloid time right oh, like no. all the tabloids were really big Yes. And they focused a lot on my body and, oh my God, how fit she is. How I did all these fit ads and how beautiful, you, do you know Your what I'm saying? Six pack. Yes. Right. Yeah. Look how much weight she's lost throughout this process, which does come naturally. But once it ends, I'm like, well, now I have to stay. <laughs> like I have right. to keep up this body because it's been, you know, she's kind of the fit ambassador for ABC. So I that's did start to feel it then. And that's probably when those body issues that came Right. When I was 22, 23 sunk in of like, how do I keep this up? Even though it's not yeah. necessarily natural. What right. can I do, you know, if I maybe just don't eat as much or, oh. you, know, you know, and then you had, so Ava was, I mean, I, first of all, I know, yeah. like, I'll never forget. Was it social media around then? Yes. Um, no, our first season of Dancing with the Stars, there was not, I mean, there was, but nobody really knew of social like, media. Like there was Twitter, I think maybe that just had come right. out. Right. I'll never forget, like, obvi- did you f- have, like, a lot of paparazzi and, like, like random pictures that, of your, of yourself taken, like, if you were on a beach or whatever? Well, yes and no. I mean, I'm, I'm in Dallas. We've always lived in Dallas. Yeah. So there's not a lot of paparazzi here. Now, when we would go to L.A., there would be. Yeah. But other than that, I didn't have paparazzi, like, sneaking in my bushes and stuff. Right. Because <laughs> when I wasn't working, I'm home in Dallas just doing my normal thing. Yeah, that's smart. Okay, so... That's interesting, by the way. I, and, and and you know what? I have to say, even if I'm not on the show and after retiring, I, I definitely still, it's still, it's so, it's like my brain is so wired to um, go back to that way of thinking. And it does take a lot of inner work and self-love and not being defined by the outside world, whether that's your job yeah. or what I you know. see, it's it, so what you think though. you see. Yeah. 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 I'm sure it helps with your kids. And, and um, like, how do you, I guess... 
you know, be a mentor to your, especially your daughter, like Ava, you know, just to be able to set an example. I feel like it's even worse now, I would say within the Gen Zers um, than it has ever been. Yeah. No, it's a struggle daily with Ava. She's tw- she's gonna be thirteen, and I can't, I'm gonna have a thirteen year old in a month. I know, <laughs> I know, I can't do it. Um, but social media is her life. Filters are her life. Likes and this are her life. And it's a world that we didn't grow up in, and so I'm navigating it with her. And in the things that I talk to with her, it's just. She just doesn't have the mental capacity sometimes when I say things to her about what matters and what doesn't matter. Because right now, all that matters to her is friends and likes and social and this. I mean, and I remember that time. And so I'm learning with her of how to let you do that because that is normal, but you are doing it on a scale that none of us at my age are, I don't even, I don't even know how to parent you with social media and the pressure. 100%. 100%. Does she have rules? Like, does she have rules on when she can use it or? Oh, well, she, first of all, doesn't have her own social media. She uses mine. So like my oh, it's good. TikTok, it's my Snapchat so that I'm like, okay. you can post it, but it's my account. I can see who's on it. Smart. Um, but I've noticed, I'm like, she loves the filters that make her lips big and her nose really narrow and her, you know, all of that. And I'm like, no, babe, you're so beautiful <laughs> the way you are. Aww. You're so beautiful. Um, and that's just the struggle I think we're all going to have of you are competing with filters and, and people with money and plastic surgery and, and unrealistic expectations that we have growing up that she is getting at 12 years old. And so does she want to dance that like if she, if let's say, let's say she does. Oh yeah. Oh Yeah. That's ballroom. <laughs> no, well, she wants to. She literally wants to follow. She's like, I want to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, and then I'm going to be on Dancing with the Stars. I'm like, oh. No. <laughs> and so, what do you? But are you going to just let her, you know, spread her wings and fly? Or hundred percent. If that's if that's your avenue, that's your avenue. I I hate that the bar has been set really high for her in something that she loves because only failure can come if she doesn't accomplish that. And I hate that for her, you know, but lessons from failure, there's no success without it. Right. But as a parent, you don't, you don't, I'm like, I don't know how that feels. I don't want to see you try for something that you've been wanting 10 years and not get it. And not saying she won't. I just, I, um, you know, I look back at my resume going, I don't know how the heck I did it. I feel like it's like this fairy tale. It was just luck and stuff written in the stars. Did your parents push you to do anything? My mom put me in dance at two. She grew up in a household where she was not allowed to dance. And so she was sure to have a dancer. But what it did was it burnt me out. You know, by 13, 14, I was like, I'm done, mom. I don't want to do this. Which is, you know, I didn't dance for a while. And come Dancing with the Stars, I felt rusty. But when I look back, I'm like, I really kind of looked like I knew what I was doing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, my I was I was pushed into it for sure. I didn't do anything else other than dance. Got it. Got it. So you had a dance mom. I had a dance mom that didn't want to admit she was a dance mom. (laughs) (laughs) By the way, I have the same exact story. I always say I come from the original dance mom. I love you, mom. She listened. I I love Mary too. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So what was your partnership like with Tony? Um, First time around, total, I would say brother, sister, drove each other nuts. We, I think I vented to you a lot where I was like, oh my God, I don't know how to do that. He would always call me his little brat. Like we just bumped heads because I didn't understand the process, right? I'm coming from my cubicle experience on The Bachelor, which you can't even say is real reality TV. And Tony, I mean, can you say Tony was one of the most serious instructors that that y'all had, <laughs> if not the most? I mean, I would say he was the most experienced. And he was the most experienced and most formal instructor, I will say like he he definitely and I and I love and I love that because I love old school. Like when I see these kids on Dancing with the Stars come into rehearsal with sneakers, I'm like, first of all, that is not (laughs) professional. I get so upset about it. And I'm like, how dare you let your celebrity rehearse in shorts, ew, and (laughs) sneakers like how these people come on, kids put a Latin skirt on and some yeah. heels and put a smile on your face for God's sake. That's the way to describe. So Tony was, he was professional and he was there yes. to do it. And he was there. To Absolutely. Speak. And 
my brain just didn't work that way. I was like, <laughs> I need breaks and I need time off and I need. Can we have lunch? Uh, exactly. Um, now we always worked really well together. We were a great partnership, but our first season, and I think he would agree, we definitely butted heads a lot. We would come into practice ticked off at each other more times than we did. Have- but he always got you coffee. He always got me coffee. Um, All star season, I adored the crap out of Tony. Okay, I'm why? Kidding. Why? What? So you had a three year hiatus, basically, yeah. from your first season, season eight, where you made the finals, to yeah. the All Stars, to the tour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So three, three, three. Yeah. I think we had a lot more respect for. I had a hundred percent respect for Tony and what he had to do. Right. I now I saw the show. I knew what the show was about. I think he had respect for me and that I brought a lot of ideas to the table too, you know, and that sometimes I found these things on YouTube where I'm like, dude, look at that trick and that's fun. And he was open to it? 100%, which he was not the first season. Like the first season, it was Tony's way, the way he wanted it. But all-star season, we both came in with this. We are complete freaking underdogs <laughs> in terms of star power on this cast, right? I Got You it. look at the names that we were competing against and we went, let's just do everything we can do and have fun. But you and, were America's sweetheart. Still, um, probably still is. I wouldn't say America's sweetheart, but I mean, I I definitely made a career for myself. Yeah. But it wasn't a Kirstie Alley career. It wasn't a right. Smith career. I mean, when, right. when you look at the people on that all-star season, yeah. I was like, I don't have the fan base that they have built but in. You, like, you gained it from we gained this it. show. We gained yeah. it. Um, but he came in so much more relaxed and I came in so much more relaxed and it just... Right. Because there was no pressure. Like you said, you were the underdog. And it it was like, it was a complete magical season. When I look back going, I, we had fun every time. And I, you know, I have nothing but great memories from that all-star season. And I think he does too. I think it was, it was just magic. Well, and it was his first mirror ball. It was his first win. It was his first mirror ball. And what a way to win, you know, an all-star season. 100%. Yeah. Did you have any, I know you're not like this and you're going to say no, but like, when did you know you were going to win? Uh, I, I never knew we were going to win. I'll be honest, going up against Sean again. <laughs> cause, I know. Now, let me just tell you, I love Sean. And Sean was one of those people, our very first. Sean Johnson. Season, yes, Sean Johnson, that we bonded really well. Like Sean and I, because yes. bless her heart, Sean is an Olympian. And when her practice started at 10 o'clock, she was there at nine warming up. And by 1130, yeah. she's pissed off because Derek still was not there <laughs> to practice. Oh, she danced with Derek that season. She had Derek. And she was always waiting for Derek to get to practice. And that's when I was always on break with Tony. And we would just sit and chat. But watching somebody like Sean practice, her brain is wired differently than yes. everybody else's. It is and perfection. same with Emmett's and same yes. with the athletes. It that's why I prefer athletes. Because, all the time. And yep. yeah. They're doing the homework, yes. eat, breathe, yes. dancing. So it's intimidating to go against that because that's not my brain. Like I, mm. I am a brain that requires breaks, time off, days off. Um, <laughs> days off. You're on the wrong show, my friend. <laughs> no. <laughs> so no, I never, there was never a time where I'm like, we've got this in the bag. And when it was down to Sean and I at the end, and you know, Tom used the words, now they have one too, where you go, they've won two trophies. Are you talking to Sean? Or now they've won one as well. And you're talking to Melissa and Tony, who <laughs> won? Still didn't. Oh, so you were starting to get all like it. It's interesting, right? Like you start to like <laughs> you you really uh, obsess over a few words. Like I do the 100%. same thing, and Gilles did the same thing. You know, like was, back in season eight, and it was yeah. like when we ha- made that final. I think it worked against us because he was obsessing over all those little things. But like, how can you not? Like you yeah. you really dive. You have to. First of all, you can't come on here and say you've got another job and the, think that you can only do this part time. Right. Like if you want right. to win, or if you even want to make the finals you know you got to commit in anything you do yeah, uh-huh. and i believe though that um like this is why i don't believe in general there's no such thing as balance because it's like i've been trained as well my brain to um it's all or nothing yes yeah. i'm an addict my name is Cheryl Parker. i'm an addict <laughs> oh. um but like look i think i thought that maybe you would have came into all stars with more pressure com- being like having done a season already i love that this you had a different mentality going yeah. into it yeah. And did you want to dance with Tony for all stars or? Yeah. No, you, I, yeah. Adina had told me, she's like, I can't guarantee who you're going to have. And I said, that's fine. But I did tell her, I was like, I know Tony. Tony knows how I dance. If you ever saw Tony and I practice, like he didn't speak. He would just dance and I would follow. Like we just had this language of, I can learn from you. Lead and follow. Yeah. 
which I learned when I did tour, when I had Artem trying to teach me stuff. And I'm like, I can't learn from somebody else. I was like, I don't know what you're saying. Um, Which made you appreciate Tony even more. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That was the good thing with, with Tony. And I would say a lot of the OG pros in that sense is that we have learned from the experience that we, we, we had, I think to be able to translate the technique and like what we need to get out of you as far as execution goes with real words, like actual words that you understand. And I think that maybe, you know, with the newer pros, I just wonder, like, that's the whole thing. You got to kind of adjust to who you're dealing with, right? Like some people are visual. Some people don't care what the step is called. Just freaking do it. You know, (laughs) you just try to figure it out and you got to change your teaching style to you guys for being able to do that. Like, I I don't know how you can change, keep the choreography great, but change teaching style depending on who's in front of you by figuring out who they are because they can't tell you what kind of learner they are if they've never danced before. Right. Or if they don't want to (laughs) learn, they don't want to be a student. (laughs) So what I saw um, an article years ago, you said that your partnership with Tony was like an or partnerships, maybe in general on dancing stars was like an arranged marriage. I always say that as well. Can you explain to my listeners what you mean by that? hundred percent. You are forced to be with this person for (laughs) eight plus hours a day. You have to get along. I mean, I mean, or not or not, but As an audience member, you can tell when the partnership hates each other. There was one dance. We were dancing to a Michael Buble song, and I I think it was a cha-cha. And Tony and I did not speak all week to each other, like all week. He taught me the dance. I learned the dance. And then we called it quits. But what what started that? Why? I don't, I think we were just frustrated. I mean, you know what happened? season eight. I think it was the original season. Yeah. Um, you just kind of get, you're getting burnt out and you're getting tired and it's, I'm just, I'm pissed off and you're the, the person honeymoon can, phase is over because you're my arranged husband. I can be mad at you. Um, and the one critique we got from every judge that week was something's off. Y'all don't seem right. Now, had they seen footage before? Maybe. Um, but I, I went, Tony and I, after that dance, were like, we got to fix this. Like we can't go out looking like we are against each other. Because ultimately, we're fighting for the same thing. And if I'm mad at you one week and you're mad at me one week, we need to figure out how to get over it. Because, yeah. again, we're on the same team. We both want to yeah. win. We both want the trophy. And I can't win without you. And you can't win without me. Who and started that conversation? I think we both did. Honestly. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. I mean, you know, Tony was mature in the sense he was already, he was married. He was in a relationship. He kind of knew how to navigate <laughs> crazy women right <laughs> so you are crazy girl i wasn't crazy that. but you know it's like we had this respect for each other ultimately of okay you know i don't i have no i don't hate you i really don't because i know what goal you're trying to get to and i know you mm-hmm. don't hate me because i'm trying to help us get to that goal it's just and you're you- also insecure and vulnerable and just freaking like let you know what i mean not, like you're in step yes. this is not your world no, not at all. But, you know, to Tony's credit, he always knew that. And we could always come back to that. We're on the same team. And yeah, go. that's good. So. Um, when So, okay. So then you make the finals. And I think that's th- season eight. eight season okay. eight. Yeah. So look, I <laughs> believe that there's some seasons where the cast have the great camaraderie happening between the people and the cast. And there's some that that is just not, it doesn't click as much. I would say last season, I don't know if you've been watching the show, but this past season, they amazing. Dina did an amazing job. Um, So did all the other execs. Like they had great chemistry. Would you say that our season was the same? I feel like you are baiting me. (laughs) (laughs) Don't call me Barbara Walters. I'm not. Listen, um, I will say... And I will say this. I love Sean. I, I absolutely adore Sean. I think Sean and I, up until the final, had a great relationship. Gilles and I maybe butt, but it heads a little bit. She's laughing. This is why you're baiting me. Now, my <laughs> issue, my issue, personally. No, I, swear, I don't even remember. Remember, I was drinking back then. <laughs> we may have something different. He started, in my mind, to take it so seriously. And, like, he wasn't even allowed to be friends with me anymore. You Wait, know? What do you mean? I, you know, before, not even before the finals, probably before two weeks before the finals, like we could talk in the hallway between practices. And then he almost couldn't talk to me anymore. I was the enemy. And I don't know if, if Sean was the enemy. I don't even. Or it <laughs> yeah. was just me. It's but, competitive. Yeah, the competitive. Right. right. Yeah. But I would see it happen. Like he's taking, this is like life or death to him. And he is, 
I, I, I don't know how to handle it. And um, no, I, I didn't know how to handle it either, but I definitely did t- pull him aside and just say like, it's okay. Right. Like, and right. also, like you said, when people fight on camera or when people are fighting, just people are not stupid at home. Like, especially 100%. watching this past season, I can tell when people are just not feeling mm-hmm. each other. And it's always at that mid season mark where you just like want to kill each I'm other. Done. Right. <laughs> yeah. But then also with Jill, I said, look, you can, s- there's a difference. And, and that's when it started becoming a downhill slope because yeah. we ha- start, we were getting like tens yeah. season or week four or something. And, you know, I was like, you have to, you can't, but then you also can't change anybody. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah. No, he, he was in it to win it a hundred percent. And it was, (laughs) I'm not competing against friends anymore, you know? (laughs) So he just stopped talking to you? Basically. Yeah. And, and to be honest, all stars felt very similar with him where I went. I was not his partner, so I can't vouch for that. I was like, I don't. And again, I went into all stars with this whole, like, no, Not, you were full of positive energy. I was. I was like, listen, I'm the next one out, so it's fine. Um, and no, he yeah. I don't I don't relate to personalities like that again, because that's just not how I am. And so yeah. I tend to just be like, back away, got it, noted where I fall. Yeah. Um and, and you, that's where Sean is like mm-hmm. silent but deadly. Because it's like, you know, she's an actual Olympian oh and God. she was like, I think that was giving her more fire. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Well, that's the end of that. And that plane ride must have been very awkward then, huh? R- uh, please remind me. I don't remember. <laughs> We're going to do fan questions and rapid fire. So at B, I suck at pronouncing these Instagram names, um, at PD Monkey. Okay. That's, wow. Which partner would you want if you weren't paired with Tony? Oh, that's not fair. Just say it. I don't, I really don't know. Now, okay. Let's, let's, to make it fair, pick somebody from last season. Um, I would say, I'll just say Artem because I've learned dances from Artem before. He taught me on tour. So I would say Artem. Now I'm terrified of him and I don't know what to say to him ever, but. He's also silent, but deadly. Artem, yes. <laughs> um, wait, I have a question before we really get into this. I forgot <laughs> to ask you. You know how, okay, so there's a lot of like hookups on Dancing with the Stars and stuff. No, I did not hook up with anybody. I know that. We all know this. <laughs> you guys wanted to kill each other. God, that would have been some hot, passionate, intimate, interesting things happening. No, I know that. But if you like, okay, so one of my questions is basically like the fact that who do you think falls in love first? Is it the pro or is it the celebrity? Because there, I mean, look, I am going to be the first to take accountability here. Have I hooked up with some people? Maybe. Maybe. But I also know this, that like either you have developed this professional relationship or it becomes this like (laughs) interesting, toxic relationship in a way. (laughs) But you you and Ty had just, you guys were just dating. How did he handle it all? Um... He was fine once he knew my partner was married. How about that? Uh, uh. First time around when we were Googling everybody and he goes, I don't want you with Derek. I don't want you with Mark. I don't, and, and let's be honest. These kids were 20 at the time. Okay. When I joined Dancing with the Stars, they were. No, they teenagers. weren't. They were 20. They were young. Yes, they were. They were very young. Yes, they were very young. young. Um, but once he knew that I had a married husband, like he married man, he's got kids. Ty was like, oh, you're fine. <laughs> but if you were doing it with Derek, then it would have been a problem. I think that he probably would have had some jealousy, not just Derek, any, any of the single yeah. young, yeah. because what Ty found out with Dancing with the Stars is that those are straight young men. It is, it is not a world of like, your woman is safe with these dancers. <laughs> not that oh, I wasn't, but he, he quickly realized, oh, they're all on the prowl all the time. <laughs> Excuse me. They were. You know, you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Ty's very smart. Okay. Let's move back <laughs> on to fair okay. questions. Um, at April Chatterbox, which routine was the hardest to learn and why? Jive for me. Jive is a very unnatural <laughs> way for, I'm a ballerina. You know, well, you're also a cheerleader, though. Maybe Jive was good for you. I mean, it, it, Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders is deceiving. They're dancers. They're not cheerleaders. So I never really cheered. I didn't tumble. I didn't do any of that. But I'm a very straight up and down dancer. And so the thought of like, I don't even still know where the flicks and the kicks and all. Oh, <laughs> it's the I worst. look really awkward doing Jive. 
You looked amazing. Eh. At Mrs. Saladino, why are you so over the top with your kids' birthday parties? Laugh out loud. <laughs> I, can't help it. I know it's a problem. It's gotten worse every year, too. <laughs> you spoil them? They've, no, I decorate. If you've ever seen, like, my oh. kitchen gets transformed into, like, it's it. balloon heaven. They tell me what colors they want. And I, I have just a few years left with my kids when it comes to birthdays and stuff like that. So I'm like, I'm going to make the biggest deal that I can. I'm going to ruin any spouse for their future that they're going to have yeah. to continue to do this. But it's I your day. It. And yeah, we make a big deal about birthdays here. I mean, I didn't even know you popped out another two kids. Like, this is how out of touch I am. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I must say, I don't scroll Instagram because it's not good for my <laughs> mental health. So, this, I, first of all, I don't know if you've seen my home freaking decor. I think I'm like Betty Crocker over here. So, hey, I don't know. <laughs> so, we should get together. Um, okay. At PZB273. Oh, how wow. did you get back with Ty after The Bachelor? We already covered that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I at Kenzie know. Fulcher 413. Not a question, but Melissa's my favorite dancer Aww, that's been on the show. How thank sweet. You. Okay, rapid fire. Also from the fans, except you're going to answer this question that I had already asked. Who falls in love first, the celebrity or the pro dancer? I think celebrity. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. At Heidi Lane 07, what was harder, dancing with the stars or the bachelor? Dancing with the stars. At um pzb again hey 273 who's your favorite male dancer on dancing with the stars currently oh, currently <laughs> give them to me again who's on right now alan. artem alan sasha pasha gleb you know what i'm gonna say sasha because he, hey, he i'm forgetting my, someone <laughs> sasha was my buddy on tour we were playing. sasha i love sasha who danced with allison yes yeah, I yeah. love Sasha. At Lauren Houseworth, how many hours a day are rehearsals for DCC versus Dancing with the Stars, D Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders? Yep. Uh, DCC, I would leave my work at five, get there at six, and I'd get home at midnight. Every night. Lather. Hey, you 5 a.m.? 5 p.m. I'd leave my work. Oh. I was at work oh, oh. from 8 to 5. Okay. And right, then right, I, right, right. I was at practice from six to 11 or minutes. Oh, work. <laughs> I had to work. Yes. Had to have like a nine to five. <laughs> pay my bills. <laughs> right. Got it. Got it. At Sends Rock My Socks. That's kind of catchy. <laughs> Would you ever do All Stars 2.0? I think if they did another one, you should be on it if you wanted. You know what? Ideally, I would love to. My body is a little older now. Shut and up. I think there's enough young talent to go and do another all-star season. No, but Derek said this. He did an interview recently and he said, I think all the winners should do all-stars. Would you, you would say no? If we're all the same age-ish, like, do I want to be competing against Hannah Brown? No, I don't. Like, you know what You're I mean? not really competing against them. We know that. Girl, I can't move quite as much as I, I have a bad back. So you would be the only, so you would ruin the whole I'm not All Stars. I would, but I have a back that goes <laughs> out now. My back has gone out, Cheryl. Like, you would say yes. Dina Katz would make you I say did. yes. Well, if she told me the amount I could make that first week again, perhaps I would. <laughs> I'm easily. Ching, ching, ching. Susan knows that. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Was it harder to do your first season, same person, or All Stars? Uh, first season, harder, for sure. At Addie M. West, did you like your first season or All Stars better? You already answered that All too. Stars. Okay. Um, and that's it, my friend. Yay! You you made it. Did it. <laughs> you made it without, uh, you know, blushing. I love you. I do. I love you too. Where can people find you? Um, Mel Rice Trick on Instagram. I'm still on Facebook. Just but like you also have a podcast. Video. I do have a podcast. Ty and I have one together, Logically Irrational. Sorry. I'm really bad about that. Wait. So wait. Tell us more. Uh, we've been doing it for about six years now. We got the idea because he and I are dorks at night and we just watch, you know, reality TV, pop culture. And it's very interesting the way guys view things and the way girls view things and the conversations that we would have. And so we started a podcast. Like I said, it's been six years, which is crazy. Um, and it's it's good. It's, you know, it keeps me busy. It's my income. And right. Yeah, no, it's it's and it's fun. also how does it working with your um husband? Is it, well, is it, we is only it weird? have to work together an hour a week, technically. Okay, because I'll okay. I'll get everything ready. He comes in having no idea what we're talking about, and then we record, and then he goes back to work. So it's right. good. it works. And you have guests and stuff, or 
don't do the guests. No, we just kind of keep good. us and we do our our lives. We do a reality roundup. He'll he does this tidbits with Ty where he tries to talk sports to people. <laughs> it's fun. It's, <laughs> it's cute, cute uh, chemistry. Exactly. Um, so people can obviously listen anywhere they listen to podcasts. Correct? Absolutely, yes. Thank you, my friend. Thank it's you. so great to see your face. I, know. I just want to like go Me in there. Too. Congrats on everything. I love you. I'm proud Thank of you. you. I love you. Thank you so much. Happy holidays. You too. Make sure you guys follow us at Sex, Lies, and Spray Tans on our Instagram handle and make sure you comment. Let me know who you want me to interview. What do you all think? Let me know. Hillary Burton Morgan here, and I'm excited to tell you about a new series I'm launching. It is the companion podcast to Sundance TV's True Crime Story. It couldn't happen here. Now, on the TV show, we focus on small towns and the crimes that can rip them apart. And on this podcast, we will go even deeper into our cases and give you a unique insider perspective on how these stories are told. Come join us as we get curious and get involved. Listen to True Crime Story. It couldn't happen here on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Tune in to the new podcast, Stories from the Village of Nothing Much. Like easy listening, but for fiction. If you've overdosed on bad news, we invite you into a world where the glimmers of goodness in everyday life are all around you. I'm Catherine Nikolai, and I'm an architect of Cozy. Come spend some time where everyone is welcome and the default is kindness. Listen, relax, enjoy. Listen to stories from the Village of Nothing Much on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Walter Isaacson set out to write about a world-changing genius in Elon Musk and found a man addicted to chaos and conspiracy. I'm thinking it's idiotic to buy Twitter because he doesn't have a fingertip feel for social-emotional networks. The book launched a thousand hot takes, so I sat down with Isaacson to try to get past the noise. Well, I like the fact that people who say I'm not as tough on Musk as I should be are always using anecdotes from my book to show why we should be tough on Musk. Join me, Evan Ratliff, for On Musk with Walter Isaacson. Listen on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. My name is Theo Henderson, host and creator of the podcast called We and House. My lived experience in houselessness is extensive. I was one of over 75,000 experiencing houselessness on a given night in Los Angeles. Here's the simple truth. Houselessness is everywhere. It affects over half a billion people in the United States alone. Weedy and Howes will explore the senseless tragedy of displacement from the perspective of the in house. Listen to Weedy and Howes on iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.